Hello, hello. Hello, hello, guys. Just inviting some people here first, just to start. Hello, hello, hello. Just a second. I hope you are all well okay. and fit. Hello, boys, boys, Brian, Machina. Hey, Cookie, Robinson Remedies, hello, guys. Hello. Uh, olá. Olá, irmãos de América Latina, de Chile, do Brasil. Grande abraço para a Madeira. Ken is here already. Cookie. Big man, all right. So, let's ask. I requested already. We have a big surprise today here. My my boss. <laughs> there he is. Hello. Hey. Hey, brother. It worked. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Can you hear me too? Awesome. Awesome. Oh man, that's awesome. Ken. It's a big, big honor for me to have you here. Uh, you cannot imagine because you know. I don't know if I told you personally, but you, you saved my career, <laughs> and we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk here a bit. Uh, I'm always telling that, but I never talked with you like this. And you are my boss somehow because you sponsored my job every time with the the products. And let's talk a bit. Ken, is a lot okay. of people. Hey, before we Ken. go, it says request to join. Should I push that? Uh, I... sorry. It says request to send a request to be in. Louis Sam Trumpets live. No, no, no. We are good. Okay. Okay. All right. We are all good. That's that was if you were not here already. So you had uh, to do that. But okay. in, in the case you are. This is my first so, time doing this on Instagram. Yes. So Ken created a new Instagram just for this interview, which is good. You need a big player like you one day will be a good memory. Um, Ken, tell these guys who you are, the ones that don't know you, who you are, how you did start on the music, how everything started for you. Uh, uh, my my trumpet career began when I was about uh, 12 years old. I'm Kenny Robinson, by the way, uh, a founder and president of Robinson's Remedies. Um, invented it. Yeah, right. And uh, I started playing trumpet at an early age when I was about 12. And my dad was a trumpet player. Um, and uh, he's a was a keyboard player, too. But uh, um, and then I went to uh, uh, Interlochen in the high in my high school years. Uh, the summer camps uh, I played in uh, uh, the World Youth Symphony Orchestra um, when I was um, uh, in high school. I didn't go to the academy, the actual high school. I just went to the summer camps. Uh, if those are of you familiar with Interlochen, and it was yeah. all, it's only a, a few hours drive because I live in Michigan, so it was pretty cool, you know, and. Um, I, I fell in love with um, uh, uh, Maurice Andre when I was a when I was a, a youngster. I used to listen to recordings of Maurice Andre all the time, and and I had a uh, uh, a paper out. I used to deliver newspapers, and I worked at a bowling alley, and I bought my uh, my first piccolo trumpet myself. I bought it uh, right. when I was uh, fifteen, fifteen years old, and. Um, uh, I, I, it was a Getzen piccolo trumpet and I put it together and I, I put it together myself, uh, really? because it came, oh yeah, it came, it came without a case and it came in a plastic bag and the, all the uh, valves were, came in a different plastic bag and all the slides. That's the only oh, way I could get it to be most inexpensive. Okay. You know? so, <laughs> and I put it together myself, you know, Fun. and then, uh, and then I went to um, uh, Wayne State University, make a long story short, you know, and, um, and then I, uh, I, I went out on a cruise ship and uh, I used to play on the cruise ships. I used to play a lot of, a lot of, uh, then I went and moved to New York 
uh, New York City, and I I get to I got to uh, meet and study with my boyhood hero Maurice Andre in 1991 at the New York New York Brass Conference for scholarships. It's called oh, wow. the uh, uh, Roosevelt Hotel in New York City, and I was there, and. Uh, and it was uh, great to meet him. And then, you know, I bought a Selmer piccolo trumpet and I have a whole bunch. Uh, I'm also an uh, in instrument repairman. And right. I've been doing it since I was a kid. Uh, obviously, when I put that piccolo trumpet together myself, but I, yeah. I, I'm a woodwind, a professional woodwind and brass wind instrument repairman also. Oh, I, I didn't so, know that. Yep. So I and I collect Selmer piccolo trumpets because they're my favorites. Yes. Because they don't make them anymore. You know, you no. you don't make they don't make them anymore. And I got a whole a whole bunch of them. Like, say, I'll grab some and show you. Uh, I got uh, here's a couple of them right here. Oh wow! This is a, a Selmer oh, piccolo wow. trumpet that I uh, modified myself. I did the Maurice Andre fourth valve modification. You can take the fourth valve slide out. Yes. And you wow. put a first valve slide in here like this. And, uh, yes. and you just take one and you put it in. And then what you do is you push the, when you hold the fourth valve down, it plays in G instead of A. All right. Yeah, that's but what you have, Maurice... you have to be pressing. You have to be pressing the fourth valve always down. Yes, and then it oh, plays, right. and then you play it, and it plays in G instead of yeah. A, because uh, those of you familiar with piccolo trumpet, this is an A piccolo trumpet. Yes, in the key of A. Yes, right. You you're familiar, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, perfect. And then, or then you could just put this valve slide back in, and then it'll just play like a normal normal fourth valve slide piccolo trumpet. Wow, and they are beautiful, man. Yeah. They are beautiful too. And I got uh, five of them. Wow. Uh, and wow. this one, this one, it looks a little bit bigger, see? This Longer, one, yes. This is G. All right. This is the Oh, actual... yes, I can, I can see by the slide as well, yes. Yep, see? Oh. And yes. then the fourth valve slide is long on this one. But I always keep yeah. this one in because if you hold the fourth valve down, it'll play in F instead of G. Again, yes. You know? so you, yeah. Yes. Yeah, All right. That's awesome. Andre used to be into that. All right. That's why you always see him with those, uh, with those horns and you always go, where's his fourth valve slide? Exactly. Because he's got the short one in. So, no one. Then in New York, um, I... Um, I, I got into Latin music, and I used to play with um, uh, Frankie Ruiz, Frankie Ruiz uh, salsa band. Yes, in New York, and uh, yes. I play. I played uh, some with uh, Victor Cruz in New York, and uh, um, no, no. Uh, he's in New York City. Um, but uh, Frankie Ruiz is was big, but he died in back in the nineties. All uh, right, okay. he died in ninety eight or something. And um, uh, then I played uh, with, um, oh, um, I played with Johnny Ray's band before um, in New York City, but Walter White used to play with, uh, my brand ambassador used to play with Johnny Ray all the time. Yes. This is years, yes. years before me. Um, there was a, a, a um, who's the guy that did, um, uh, let me see if I can find the salsa tune. I played with him too before too. I played with uh, um, Olga Tanyon. All right. Yeah, Good. Olga Tanyon. Good. Yeah, yes. yeah, she's great. I, I love Latin music. I play a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, played a lot, a lot of Latin gigs. And then uh, I went out on a cruise ship and I met a friend of mine, Patrick Hessian. Um, and then he went out with, he'd been trying to get the job with Maynard for a long time. And then he got it. And then he asked me if I wanted to come. And I said, sure. So I went out with Maynard uh, of course. back in uh, 2000, uh, uh, 2005. And then, uh, and then I came off the road again. And then again in 2006, I did the same thing. And then I came off the road and I was going to go back. And then Maynard died. Yes. That's how that happened. Yeah, it was, uh, it was very sudden. Yes.
So uh, you done the last two tours with Minor? Yeah, the uh, tour I, I did tour for it was called Tour Seventy Two, in in the old uh, under the old management, and then yes. um, and then the last one, and then the and then the tour it was called Tour Four under the new management, and then All they right. did one more tour and Seraphine Seraphine Aguilar went out, and yes, then, and then he was gonna. And then they uh, they did an album, and I'm I I I regret to say I didn't stay on because I I should have did that record I really should have but oh it's all that's a way Whatever. you know Whatever. yes and then uh, and then he passed a uh, May uh, Patrick had uh, been flying he was on his way out to Vegas um, oh. to uh, sub for me um, in a in a in a in a uh, a gig with Looking Glass, it's called. Um, uh, you know the song Brandy. You're a fine girl. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, he subbed in a gig with Looking Glass out there for me, and then was going to go out on Maynard's tour. And I was sitting at the computer. I remember that night, and it was uh, like in late August, uh, 2006, and uh, uh, the phone's ringing pretty late at night, and Ed Sargent is calling me, and he said. And I'm thinking, what is he calling me for, you know? And uh, he goes, uh, Maynard just passed. And I was like, oh, my God. And um, Pat, he goes, where's Patrick? I said, he's on a plane, you know, flying out to, you know, get with, go out on tour with you guys. So, and it was, uh, it was a big thing. And, you know, I miss him a lot because I know he would love Robinson's Remedies. I know. He oh, would, yes. Oh, he yes. He would be using it all the time. He'd be going, oh, yes. yeah. And, uh, my friend, my, my trumpet player invented this stuff, and it's great. <laughs> yeah, that's what he'd be saying. Yeah. You know, I, so, I, I bet he would. Yeah, I bet uh, he I'm would. sure he would. I'm sure he would. Uh, and let me say happy early birthday. Is today your birthday, or is it no, tomorrow? Tomorrow, tomorrow. 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 <laughs> yeah. So this is my gift talking with you today. Oh, this okay. honor is totally mine. So no, mine. this is how... This is how Robinson's Remedy started, okay? Um, I'll explain it. Robinson's yes. Remedy started like this. Um, I, I'm a, I was a lifelong cold sore sufferer, right? I used to get cold sores all the time. In fact, I got them on Maynard's band before. And, it, you know, it's really, it's, it's almost impossible to play, play the trumpet, you know, when you have a cold sore. Because, it, it, I mean, if they're over here, that's one thing. But if they... They can come anywhere on your lips, you know? And I used to get them everywhere. I remember a, a trombone player he's saying to me one time, I don't think I've ever seen you without a cold sore, you know? And I'm like, oh, thanks, you know? And, uh, but I, what I did is I just learned to, I learned to just deal with it, you know, and learn to yes. play. And um, the very thing that causes cold sores is like, you know, trauma to your lips. It'll cause, it'll, it, what, what they are is they lie, lay dormant in your spine, uh, cold sores do, and, um, and uh, when the conditions are right, um, you know, like, uh, you know, you, they, they, you know, you're stressed or, you, you know, stress or uh, stress or your, your immune system's down, uh, you know, a, I remember a doctor telling me, um, thunderstorms you know after a thunderstorm the negative ions in the air become positive ions because of the yes. thunderstorm, and it makes you susceptible actually it makes yes. your body viral you know so uh so you know i would get them and i would just learn to deal with them and i made her span i remember i got them before i made her span and i was worried about playing one time and i said and the, so reggie watkins he was the uh, music director great trombone player and he took me into Maynard's room and he goes, let's go see boss. And, yes. and so I went and saw boss and he looked at my lips and he goes, oh my God. Well, if you, <laughs> can't, if you can't play, you stand up there and smile with us. Yes. That's what he said. I read that. I read that on the website. Yes. That's <laughs> awesome. Man. That's awesome. Now, uh, you know, I mean, but that he knew how to do it. He, he made you want to do it, you know? So I played that night and I got to the end, and and then we're walking out to the bus, and he goes, so you played. He goes, how did you do it? And I said, I kept moving the mouthpiece around, 
to a place on my lips where I could actually play, right? Yeah. And, uh, and he goes, well, I don't know how you did it, but you sound great. That's it. That's, <laughs> That's it. What he does. And, That's uh, it. So he made me want to do it, right? So after Maynard died, I was working on a CD, um, working on my second classical CD with Trumpet in Oregon. And um, I decided to uh, do a tribute to Maynard on it, right? And um, so I, I, uh, I got a hold of Bud Herseth, um, Adolf, Her Adolf Bud Herseth from the Chicago Symphony, you know who yes. he is, right? Yeah. And yes. uh, he was retired and he wanted to do it because he loved Maynard. He was really good friends with Maynard, right? So, and, th and then I was at the, um, at the Maynard tribute concert and Charlie Schluter was there and he wanted to be a part of it. So I'm going to, I'm wow. going great, you know? So I got all these guys. I got, uh, you know, Patrick who had been playing with Maynard and um, I, uh, it was, and uh, I got Walter White to play, um, who's my brand ambassador, by the yes, way. Yes, we're going to talk Sorry. about him we're in a bit. talk about him, absolutely. And I got uh, Charlie Schluter and Bud and uh, mm -hmm. Arturo Sandoval played. Wow. And, uh, um, um, a Michael McGowan, a friend of mine who's also an, an endorser, Brian Moon, uh, John Davidson. And then I got uh, Randy Haas from the Detroit Symphony Orchestra and, yes. and uh, John Rutherford, who's also an endorser. Motor City Horns played on there. And then I had Louis Rusto uh, play timpani. On yes. this recording, uh, and he's uh, uh, was Eminem's music director for a while, and you know, a good friend of mine from Detroit, and um, yeah. so yeah, so we did a, a, a tribute to him. And after the CD came out, I was going to actually quit playing trumpet, right? Because I was just getting cold sore so bad. I said, you know, I have nothing to prove. I'm also a music repairman, so I'm going to just quit playing trumpet professionally. And, uh, and sell all my trumpets, right? And I had to really quit, and I was going to start selling them. And I was miserable. I was like, I, this is not me, you know? I'm a trumpet player. I love exactly. playing trumpet, right? So I started searching the internet, and I found um, some doctors and some virologists and some scientists that, would, that told me what to do. So I made this little... Uh, little stuff in a little jar uh, it's like a, like um oh i can't find the jar now but i used to carry it around just this little this little like carmex jar clear really? jar yeah. and it was this oil that i made with coconut oil and i put a whole bunch of stuff in it and and i he said you put it on your lips and and watch and he was right this guy was right and so i used to just carry it around in my case all the time and I started getting cold sores less and less and less, right? And um, so I let somebody, uh, a few of my friends who are, who are, who are now um, part of the company, yes. and they said, let me try this. And they put it on and they said, this is terrible. You know, it just tasted terrible, but I didn't care what it tasted. It smelled yeah, terrible. Exactly. I didn't care what it smelled like, but they said, we should market this. So I, I found a scientist in um, North Carolina, Amanda Vickers. She's still our, she's still our formulator. And oh, I... uh, she uh, said, I could make this better. And I said, okay, but, but I want you to make it the way I want you to make it. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Right? You are the player. I want you to read this book, you know, uh, by, uh, by this um, scientist. And she said, okay, I'll read the book. And she read the book and she said, you know, he makes a lot of great points. She says, I think I can make it better. And I said, I didn't believe her, but she did it. And she, she, made, it, and she made it into a really nice cream uh, and that's antiviral and there's and it's no side effects. And it works, so, I think it works better than like um, uh, Zovirax available. Oh, yes, yes. That. Yes. All that stuff works, but it's, a, but it's an expensive prescription. And what happens yes. is, um, is, is, the, is it just suppresses it. You know, it yes. doesn't really get rid of it. And it's not good for your liver. And this stuff works better. And, or or Abriva, you know. Abriva, hey, it works. I've tried everything, you know. It works, but this stuff works better. So this is why, this is how Robinson's Remedy started. And yes. I remember um, one time we were uh, at, a, at a trumpet guild conference, you know, and I had just lip repair 
for cold sores, right? Yes. And all these people were buying it. All my friends were coming over and buying it, and they're going, hey, I go, why are you buying that? You, do you get cold sores? Oh, no. Well, why are you buying it? And they go, well, because it keeps our swelling down for trumpet playing. They got, and I heard from, like, you know, 25 of my friends, they were going, why don't you invent something for us? Yes. You know, so I, exactly. just go, uh, so I thought about it, you know, I think about what's the biggest thing for trumpet players and brass players, uh, but mainly endurance. trumpet players, it's endurance. And um, it says in the Herbert Clark Technical Studies book, um, uh, I think one of the chapter, chapter four or something, he says, uh, or chapter five, study five, he says, endurance is 90% of coronet playing. Herbert it Clark is. says that, the great Herbert it Clark, is. right? Uh, and he's right, you know. Um, so, you know, everybody deals with endurance issues. So, I, so, so what we did is we studied endurance athletes, you know, because we have to, for, we have to remember we are athletes. We are, exactly. We are endurance athletes. I mean, it takes, it, it takes, it, it takes you out of you physically to play the trumpet. When you use your whole body, to play the yes. trumpet, uh, you're tired. Yes. And, and especially, this can only vibrate for so long. You know, I don't yes. care who you, I don't care if your air is great or anything else, your playing apparatus, this has to be the reed, okay? Yes. So what happens is um, the, the, uh, the, it's science and physiology, okay? So we studied endurance athletes. We say, you know, this is a muscle. This, the whole face is a muscle. And if you look on our website, uh, there's a big diagram of it. Yes. Right? right? And you've seen that diagram before. Yes. Uh, and, you know, we have the obiculus oris. The, you know, and these two. Right? And then the buccinator. Yes. Buccinator. Buccinator. Yeah, buccinator. Right here. Right. And there's a, a, you know, so these are all muscles. And what they're designed to do is they're, you blow hard with, 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 with uh, your diaphragm. And you resist the air here and create, and it's all air velocity. High yes. notes is all air velocity. It's the speed of the air. It's easier than a lot of people realize. It's not yeah, hard yes. to play at the upper register. You just got to get that, you got to balance that, that air stream with the chops. But the, you have to have strong corners. It's really important. And a strong diaphragm to compress it. Right. Okay. So, so, but when this wears out, you can no longer resist the air. It's, it's done, you know? Yes. So we said, okay, swelling is, is only the, uh, 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 swelling is a symptom of the problem, right? Your, your mm -hmm. lips swell because it's put, putting lactic acid into your, into your muscles. It's yes. rushing. And so, we have to keep the lactic acid out. That's more important than swelling. It's always good to have a comfortable swelling, but not over swelling, right? Yes. So we need to keep the lactic acid out. So we have ingredients in there to keep the lactic acid out that, you know, it's, it keeps it, keeps it at bay. Uh, so that, so that you don't get stiff and you can last longer. But another important thing is you have to have vasodilators. Yes. That open, a vasodilator is something that opens up the blood vessels, right? Yes. And uh, you need to get fresh oxygenated blood to the muscle. That's what's important. That's why it works so well. And yes. I, you know, there's a lot of people that go, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't think it works, you know? And well, yes. it's, it's simple science and physiology. It well, yes, does. I was about to tell you that I'm selling, I'm selling a lot, not through my link, because as an endorser, I have my own link, but sometimes as, as Phil Parker sells it in England, and it's much easier, people get it cheaper from the shop. I sell a lot from Phil Parker, and I had a lot of friends saying, ah, another one, and I don't know if it works, or, but it does. <laughs> that's, no, that's the right. thing. Because, you know, because I see people taking Arnica, you know, Arnica tube and cream and oh, putting no, it on no, their no. lips. Everyone that I you sold this, do that. No, everyone that I sold this got totally in love and they are using it. They oh, are awesome. Brother, it is no is no way to say it doesn't work. Especially and I always ask this test to everyone. 
the thing is not when you are playing because this works really well during the gigs as well right that's I right like when i'm tired but if you are the kind of guy that you used to wake up the day after done like me and you can almost not play that's the days you should try this when you end yeah. up but they really tell use it and in the morning i just put the trumpet on my chops and i can play as piano as if i didn't play before so right? it is awesome it, that's, that's awesome right. and it didn't happen before to me so it helped me a lot and of course then it helped me to understand all that and now i'm more careful and i know how to do it so this is a, a life changing product in awesome. terms of the, the cold source i don't i don't have luckily but my wife does and she mm-hmm. used it and she got cured <laughs> so she, she she's not having them anymore and she was always like you every single day was one day so yeah. it's really good yeah, c- can you tell us a bit how how it works so you have some of the best guys in the world representing and that's why i use a lot because trent austin kenny rampton you i'm not even talking about yourself but your brand brand ambassador i don't know walter white many, yes how many uh, uh adam rapper they are all endorsers so uh, that yeah. guy will, they will never give the face for something that is that is right, rubbish, right. yeah so, let's let's use that point so mm-hmm. how did you connect to all that guys because i know trent austin said here on an interview he was one of the guys that ah maybe not and then he got totally in love with the product as well <laughs> so he said that here <laughs> so well, many guys well so so this is how um when we were inventing uh uh lip renew you know i had the idea i was talking to amanda on the phone right and i said we want to invent uh like a cream like some kind of by like endurance cream for brass players and you know just win musicians right yes. so i said okay we we're, we're going we want to make it swelling but um we also want to deal with lactose i said lactose she goes you mean lactic acid right and i said that's right that's right and so yes. she goes, uh, so she did all the bunch of research and was sending me documents all the time and then and then and then uh walter and richard had an idea of um uh, a vasodilator and i said that's a great idea too right so, so they I were working her. with you already rich and walter they yeah, were yeah, already with yeah, you yeah okay, we were good. already just started you know and right. walter i've known walter for since i was a since i was a kid you know since i was right. just a, a real green kid you know and he helped right. get my career started actually all right yeah, cuz uh, because right. he was already a really accomplished trumpet player and Maynard used to say oh walter white's the best trumpet player in the world that's what he used that's to say good really <laughs> you know awesome. yeah he said That's Maynard awesome. Ferguson used to say that you know and, yeah. uh, and he not kidding you know <laughs> you should believe it. you should believe yeah. him yes. yeah yeah and um so uh uh it, so what we did is we uh were testing it Amanda was send us this uh this uh prototype right and uh Walter and I were doing a a musical at the time called Motown the musical you All know right. it's a tough one it's real it's a long blow man it's just on Motown. your face on your, bar, on your <laughs> exactly. face and uh, we got it in the mail uh, uh you know in between shows we got it in the mail you know and uh so the second show we started trying it and walter's putting it on every 2 minutes you know he just keeps going every 8 bars or something walter's trying i go dude you're wasting it and he goes no <laughs> it feels great uh, we're trying it we're trying we're trying to see if you could use too much or use too little and and it really didn't matter but we it took us a few it took us a few uh, prototypes to re- it took us you know quite a long time to okay the final product yes. and um what it do- we made it so that it soaks in quick you don't need a lot a lot of people don't know how to use it yes that's yeah. the problem so that's why i want to tell you on this instagram live how to really use it you just let me get some out just here just do it please and uh do it i i saw you doing it in one video but that's really important because i have friends putting a lot on the lips <laughs> right right i'm going to just get a little tube out here okay and they just get they just get the the mouth totally orange and full of liquid for nothing yeah yeah that's too much 
Of course. I mean, but it, it, it'll work. Okay, this is what I do, like, uh, during the gig, for example. Like, if I'm playing a gig, I'll sit and be sitting on the bandstand or something, right? And um, I usually like to do it before I even start playing. Yeah, Just me too. Just a little bit of the cream, you know, in the, yeah. uh, the airless bottle. And I think yes. about, let's see, can you see this? Uh, no, up. Can you move up the finger? Yeah. Yes, uh, more, 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 more up. Sorry. Yeah, like that. Like, okay. Oh, yes, perfect. And yes. I put a little bit, about that much on my finger. Yes. And then I rub it into the lips, but more importantly, all the muscles. All the, yes. All yes. lips and into the face. Yes. Like this, okay? I feel it helps me a lot here in this. Right, right. In this. That's right. Yeah. And then you feel that cooling, that cooling yes. effect. And it's already soaked in, you know, yes. it, it soaks in in seconds. And I made it like that on purpose so that what happens is that it soaks in, you don't wipe it off, right? Yes. Right. And that's all you need. And, and if, if you're, getting, you're playing a real demanding gig and you get a break, you know, for, for a couple minutes, just do it again, you know, a yes. little bit. And yes. then just, just have faith. It'll work. Because it's opening, the reason you feel that cooling effect is it's soaking in and it's pulling, it's, it's actually pulling blood in. And yes. That's why it says on the back, that's why we called it Lip Renew. Walter named it. Yes, yes. And he called it Revive, Refresh, Renew. Brother, I never, I never had an, a bad day again since I started using this. That, that's, that's the thing. I used to do, I used to say to my students, I used to have two bad days, two good days a week and the other days more or less. Now I may have one day more or less a week and all the rest are, are good. I'm fresh. It, it really works. And I need to ask you something that is a really big doubt on people that I'm selling. This is exactly the same as the air bottle, right? The same product. Uh, absolutely, yep. Yes, all right. But, and this, is That's this different. the same one? All right, no. exactly. Okay. This is what I use when I go to bed, for example, before right. I sleep. That's right. See right. This, okay. um, this is called Lip Renew Recovery. Exactly. Okay. This is for when you're not playing. Uh, even though some yeah. people use it while they are, but, you know, you can if you, if you can. But this is, like, designed to feel like a waxed product. Yes. Yeah. But it's no wax because me and all of us at Robinson's Remedies do not believe in wax. Yes. Wax is, uh, it won't hurt you, but it's not going to help you. Well, because exactly. When there's, wa when there's wax in, you're creating a barrier. So nothing can get in and nothing can get out. You could have all the greatest ingredients in the world. If you have, if you have um, um, uh, uh, grease or wax or grease in it, it's not going to soak in. I think it stops the vibration a bit. Wax. Yeah, and it can. So that's you why you have to, like, I know people that use chat, uh, chapstick, right? I know, um, I know. Yeah, but they always have to wipe it off. Yes. And, and, and you know, uh, so, but this is not meant to be used while you're playing. It's used to be, it, it feels like a wax product, but it's not. No. Right, there's no wax in it at all. We invented the technology uh, for that. Yes. And, um, and, um that's why it soaks in a little quicker than a wax product. But it, what it does, it's extended release of the same ingredients that's in here, except yes. over a long period of time so that you heal. Yes. It's so good. I use this for protection, like when I'm not playing. All right. Okay. Right. Um, I use this during the day, before I play, and when I play, as I told yep. you. But before I go to bed, as I have the problem of the, the day after really swollen, I use this. Never had problems anymore. And right. anyone that can that want to try it here in England, please contact me if you don't want to contact in America because the ports, the, the yeah, cheap. I understand. Go uh, see two weeks. <laughs> no, no, no. I have, I have a few samples that Richard sent to me and I can send the samples to people. So feel free to just contact me because I will post this interview can on YouTube and Facebook later. So it mm -hmm. will be people can watch it again and again so mm -hmm. we'll be good 
Uh, so you want to ask me any more questions? Like uh, yes, I will, I will, I will. And one of the questions, some someone asked me to to ask you uh, was about nothing about Robinsons yet, but about playing with Aretha Franklin because that's something I know. Minor Ferguson for the trumpet players is is that thing. Wow. But for people that is not a trumpet player playing with Aretha Franklin, like my wife, for example, wow. How did that happen? How, how, how did, it, <laughs> did I play with she? Aretha? Well, um, there was a, I, I've been playing with like, uh, I started with the Motown stuff uh, with um, the Temptations. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, of the Temptations review featuring Dennis Edwards, right? Uh, oh, Dennis God. Edwards was a was a later temptation that, that got famous with Cloud Nine and yes. and Ball of Confusion and that that kind of stuff, right? And um, then I started playing with the Four Tops. You know, uh, there are there are the Four Tops. Uh, uh, I can't help myself. You know, the yeah. the Motown stuff. And then I remember one time. Um, oh, back. Uh, in the early 2000s, almost 20 years ago now, um, there was a guy, there was a director named George Roundtree. He's a famous director for, um, for, um, for the Four Tops. And uh, he said, I just, he called me, called me up. We became good friends and he was a great director, great music director. And he said, there's going to be a guy calling you named H.B. Barnum. And he was the director for Aretha Franklin, and you can wow. uh, you can look up H. B. Barnum uh, uh, on uh, you know on the, uh, he he's got had a tremendous career, um, and H his name is H like Harry, uh, yes. B like boy Barnum, and uh, Barnum. and um, he was he could play every instrument. He could play like he played trumpet and he could play clarinet. He started on clarinet and he played but well, or, well or more or less. Right, right. And and he grew up in uh, Los Angeles area and his yes. uh, and he became uh, he just he just did. He's had an amazing career. It's unbelievable. And he's in his 80s now and he's still oh. going strong. And uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's in his 80s and he's still going strong. H.B. Barnum. And so he called me and we got to talking and we did some gigs and uh, I, got the, I got the band. I hired the whole band for him and he yes. loved it. And we became friends and that's how I started playing with, uh, with Aretha. And, wow. uh, she, you know, everybody's had their run-ins with Aretha, but I love her, but that was the queen, you know. She was like, she tried to manage too much. Yes. You know? And um, and then uh, she got another music director, and I became friends with him, Fred Nelson. And then uh, we did that. And then when she passed, um, Fred Nelson said, "Get the band together," you know. So I did, and H. B. Barnum was there, of course, and uh, and he conducted the overture, and it was oh. and it was something. It was really something else. That's how I. Uh, I could thank George Roundtree from the Four Tops for um, getting me uh, with uh, uh, Arisa. Yeah, yep. she she is my favorite singer ever. Oh. Uh, well, you know, she still ha she had the pipes. She oh, really yeah, really had the pipes. Yes, yes. Even at an yeah. old age, she could sing her. She could sing her ass off. She was just. Yes. Yep, she's great. And man, um, j let me just send a big hug to my label from portugal my my label is here they just bought my album to sell in portugal now which has the robinson remedies logo everywhere on the cover they great just, awesome. it is good. um so you're living in portugal right no i'm living in england okay but you're from I play, portugal i'm from portugal but i i play in england yeah for seven years now okay so where are you living in england somerset bristol how far is it from Parker? From Phil Parker. Yeah, from Phil Parker. Phil, Phil Parker is in London, so I'm about three hours okay. from there. But Do you I go there. Uh, I I go often to to London, so I like I love to go there, and you, I've never you, been. Tell me. Do you Do you love it in in, in England? Ah oh, man, I do. I do. 
I do. I would, I would prefer my dream was America always, but I met my wife here and she didn't let me go anymore. <laughs> so I have to stay here. Yeah, no, but yes, I, I like it. It's, it's a different world from Portugal. Unfortunately, Portugal economically at the moment is really, really bad. Not so good. now it's like Venezuela from Europe. So oh. you can imagine. Yeah, we are turning really, really down. It's the only problem. And of course, Is I have different opportunities. Is Sorry? Lisbon in, isn't Lisbon in Portugal? Yeah, yeah. Lisbon is our capital. Yes. Well, uh, I remember when I was a, a kid, I auditioned for the Lisbon Symphony. Oh, wow. That's you know? awesome. And, and I got in the finals, but I didn't get the gig. But I had right. only like 20 or 21 yeah. or something. Oh. Yeah. Yes, my yeah. my university teacher is is playing there, is one of the players there, so that's really good. And in Portugal, we don't have big band. We have one professional big band in the old country, and that's my thing. That's my style as well. So I just play commercial and big band stuff, more like you. Now, something that people asked me to ask you as well about your passion by uh, with the piccolos, because it's really weird to see someone like you that plays so many commercial jobs motown big band and then your passion for the piccolo is is something incredible which is totally opposite uh how did that come well you told you told a bit in the beginning because of maurice andre but mm -hmm. how do you kept that connection between the classical and all that jobs you've done in the other side of the market well let me tell you um I was actually classically trained. Um, All right. Okay. Uh, I had I had no I I I I'd never played a commercial gig <laughs> until I was uh, getting uh, until I was like uh, probably nineteen or twenty. All right. I started playing uh, with a with an R and B band, a local R and B band, when I was uh, when I was um, uh, in college. You know. And then I started playing Latin music, you know, because uh, I always, uh, uh, because I, I could play, uh, I could play all the, you know, the Clark cornet solos and, um, and, and I played the C trumpet most of the time, you know, uh, at Interlochen. And I, uh, I played in the concerto competition at Interlochen on my E flat trumpet and oh, my piccolo wow. trumpet, you know, and, uh, yeah. and I would just, um, I was just enthralled with uh, Maurice Andre and and then you know Bud Herseth and uh, and and I, I also loved Harry James though. You know? That's exactly. I loved Harry James and so and I remember I uh, I when I was in college I I met Jerry Callett. Remember him, Jerome? Yes, Callett? Jerome Callett. Yes. And, 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 yeah, and, and, you know he was a funny guy, but he knew a lot about how the amateur worked you know but don't you think don't you think about jerry i always like to ask this because i love his concepts but don't you think he it was a bit too much like yes well, this is the was, right way this is the, only then, way. the but what i didn't like is he would go oh that's no good anymore I, exactly that's exactly what that's like. what i mean yes because it was good yes it still was good if you just followed his things and I, I, he would show me, he told me, watch this video. And I'd watch videos. And then I remember, uh, that's how I met Maurice Andre from Jerry Callett, because he yeah. knew him. You know, yeah. he, came right. over to see, he came over to see Jerry Callett at his table, Maurice Andre did. And he would, Jerry was playing these like, you know, F's above double C or something like that. And, and Jerry and Maurice Andre was touching his stomach, going, "Where's all the air coming from?" Right? <laughs> and um, but uh, Maurice Andre liked his low register, Jerry's low register, and Maurice Andre used to tone through the teeth the same way Jerry did. Yes, he, he would spit. You know, when when you saw Maurice playing, his the tongue would be going. Would be going <laughs> oh yeah. Yes, you would almost look like the trumpet's bouncing on his chops. Yes. So, so, but I, I just naturally played like that. You know, All right. I anybody that can really play naturally plays like that. Plays that person yes. plays like that. I remember yes. he spit. He actually spit. <laughs> but that's what Jerry yes. would talk about, and that's the most I ever got out of Jerry. Yes. You know? yes. yes. By yes. the tongue. The tongue yes. is very important. That's why you see Maurice Andre when he's playing. His famous thing would be to go like this. Can you see? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would go like this. Yes, yes. You right. can see him doing that a lot, exactly. That's yes. right. Right. And he's setting up the tongue is what yes. he's doing. Right, you know? Straight away. That's right. And spitting. Yep. Open teeth. You have to have your teeth open. Yes, Jer oh. Jerry, Jerry, the only thing about Jerry, I don't know, well, you learn with him, so he's really good. That's why these interviews are really good. He changed this concept through, through his career. And in the end, he was already saying that what he said in the beginning was not that good. And he was just lifting the tongue and touching the teeth with the middle of the tongue. Like, uh, that didn't work for me. <laughs> I, I tried, yes. It, well, it plays much louder and much cleaner, but, but you get limited in terms of articulations, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I so, can't, so, all right. So, I mean, if I'm going to be in the extreme upper register, sometimes I, I, I just notice I do that. I just go, you know, well, which, you know? Yeah. and then, yeah. But, but, but that's to create the compression, in it? Inside yeah, with the tone, but yeah. in the low register. And, no. know, and, and, and like Walter, he plays like that too, you know? He, he, um, he uh, goes like this when he's setting up. All right. You know? Right. Yeah. You know, you can tell. And, and, yes. and I, I like to play. There's no wrong way and there's no right way. But if whatever works, works for you, you know, exactly. because the, that's why there's, a, a, you know, a million different mouthpiece sizes. And because no, nobody's am, embouchure is exactly the same. Nobody has the exact same embouchure, you know. Yes. So what, what my advice is to is to do what works for you. Yes. yes, that's, that's what, really you know, important. You, you, you need to find something that works for you. And right. a lot of people, they go get these shiny trumpets, you know, and uh, they go get these, you know, these these custom mouthpieces, right? Yes. <laughs> right? For what? They forget about this. They forget about their playing apparatus. Yes. What about your playing apparatus? Exactly. You know, exactly. I, I mean, I've been to Puerto Rico a lot of times, you know, with Frankie Ruiz. And there's yes. a lot of great trumpet players in Puerto Rico. No doubt they about it. They all play high. They all play high, in it. <laughs> And they can play high. But you know what? Their careers are pretty short-lived. Yes. You know yes. why? Because they don't do any maintenance. They just, wing, just, you know. Yes. Because they grow up playing the Latin high stuff already. They grow up like That's that right. without any basis. That's right. why he's so, important. So a good friend of mine over there um, has gotten Robinson's Remedies. I don't know if he's using it or not. I think he is. Luis Aquino. Oh, you know, yes. He is. I know. He's a big, big trumpet player. He uses it. Yes. Uh, I've I seen some posts. Yes. yes. I've seen yep. some posts. Yes. Yep. Uh, yeah. and, and, and he's one of those guys that uh, is going to have a long playing career because he knows how to do it right. Well, yes. He cares about his playing apparatus. Yes. Yes. And I've seen people like I've seen some 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 of these dumb comments on Facebook and you know like people go and they say Robinson's remedies and this other person goes, "Oh, preparation H. Why would you use that? It'll take exactly. down the swelling, but you know what preparation H does? It's actually a vasoconstrictor. It makes yes. the blood vessel smaller. It's like doing it's the opposite. Stupid. You're going to injure yourself like that. Well, Ken, it, that, that, that's the thing. I, I hear a lot uh, comments when I post on Facebook the stuff. I try to sell it, of course. We always have the, the pseudoscientists coming saying, ah, no, but I do this. All right. I have people saying that if we scratch, I don't know if you hear that in, in the Brazilian people will laugh in Portuguese. If you scratch the mouthpiece on the floor, on the asphalt, it will make really good to your ambition. And that's it. Yes. Yes. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Really? People from Brazil will ask any Brazilian guy or Portuguese and they will tell him. Yes. So that, that, of course, is people that know nothing about this. If we take, if we take this product, if we go to read, that's why I always tell, read the Robinson Remedies website. Try to understand what is there. It's easy to see. We just need to use it. If it doesn't work for you, good. I can give for free. I, I will pay anyone that tells me this doesn't work. I can pay anyone. No one can tell me that. Mark Upton is probably the most demanding lead player in this country now in England. He's your, oh, yeah, Mark um, Upton, right? I recommended him to you, and he's right. one of your endorsers now. Mark, 
is totally in love with this and everyone on the Royal Marines is using this now in the band, isn't it? So, what can wow. I say? Uh, you know who's uh, going to school over there is... Um, uh, Larry Merigliano. Uh, oh, uh, Larry? Larry came here to the Royal Marine School with Mark, yes. Uh, to give uh, a uh, class. Mariliano, right? Is, yes, didn't Mariliano. he invent another, another thing? Didn't the he invent CTS. something? The CTS, well, is the compression system. It's like a, a car's kind of car compression measurement. But yeah. it, it, it's not about measuring. It's about the, comp the pressure it gives you back. So you just use the mouthpiece. And you are blowing just with the mouthpiece, but it gives you the pressure back to build. Do you know the balanced embouchure yeah. method? That's exactly the same, but with a tool. The balanced embouchure you should do. The balanced embouchure is, uh, is who, is, uh, who wrote Jeffries. that book? Je Jeffrey's, uh, Jeffrey's, um, oh man, brother name. Oh, you, you. Okay, I, I don't rem I don't know who wrote it, but uh, I know uh, it is really well. It's basically building. This Gillespie used to as a big picture, which is the base for Larry's uh, tool. Oh right, right. So, compressioning. This with the mouthpiece will build these muscles without being playing. That's more or less the idea behind that. Okay. It works, but you need to be careful because it's I a bet. kind of if you use it too much, you're going to get too much tension here, too much. And your embouchure can get really, really tight, which is not good as well. We know the aperture needs to be natural, naturally right. closed. Um, and yeah, I got to you, you got to be able to, uh, you know, close the aperture up and resist the air. Yes, yes, that's uh, more. I, I notice I never say more about. I never say more air. I always say faster. Yes, yes. And Actually, you, you, the higher you play, the higher you play, the less air goes into the horn. Yes, yes, yes. That what yeah. exactly? Thank you for saying that. Um, just to finish, Ken, I will not take you too long. Just two questions now. One is what what gear you use, which trumpet you use normally, and which mouthpiece do you use? And we know there are no miracles, and your mouthpiece maybe is not mine. But what do you use? Well, let's see. Uh, it, dep it depends on what I'm playing. Um, uh, I, I use. Uh, I have several trumpets. Um, I, I use a, a Bach 43 lightweight. Um, and that's what I used on Maynard's band. I also have um, uh, a, a Yamaha uh, 8310Z. Bobby Shoe. You know, uh, uh, this is a Bobby Shoe. This is the second yes. generation Bobby Shoe. It's a nice horn. I, I use yes. it quite a bit. And, um, right. and, um, and I just play a, a 3C, a Bach, Bach 3C. Yeah. Uh, or, uh, or like a, a Bach one and a, one and a quarter C if I'm playing... Um, if I'm classical. playing um, classical and, um, yes. and I, I'm doing a new classical record right now, I'm working on it. So and I got I picked up this horn a couple a few years ago because it was in Japan, and it's a Yamaha Chicago Symphony. Oh wow! Generation I love them. Yes. Speed. And and the price it was it was at a warehouse in Japan that was you know closing or something. Oh yes. I paid, I, I just made a ridiculously low offer on it. And the guy goes, okay, I'll take it. Oh, <laughs> wow. Awesome. So I got it for like, you know, like 2200 bucks or something. And awesome. it's worth, uh, you know, they're That's worth almost for 4, free. 000, five, yes. four five thousand, you know. And then I started playing it and I had to get used to it. It's a little different animal, but it's got that, sounds like a Bach. Yes. Just yes. like a Bach. Yes. And uh, and so I use this, and I use a three C or one and a quarter C for playing classical. And, That's good. And then uh, I always have this this old Bach right here, this Bach C trumpet. This is um this belonged to uh, Frank Cataravic a long time ago, um, and sold wow. to a friend. And I had a custom tunable bell put on it. Well, I was about to ask you that. Yes, it's different. Yeah, it's a little different. It's got a tunable bell, as you can yes. see. No tuning slide anymore. Oh yes, awesome. Yeah, and it's good. And and sometimes I use this. 
Sometimes this is my go-to horn, you know? All right. Uh, and then I have, uh, I have uh, here's my old, my Bach, my Bach 43 lightweight. Bach is back for me. Man, no, my dream yeah. is the Bach 37 again. Yep. Uh, and this horn's great because it's got a, it's a, it's a 43 lightweight. You can really put, you can really sizzle and play high and play commercial, yes. but sit in the orchestra and play very dark. And well, then, yes. And then if I'm going to play a, um, a, a piccolo trumpet, what I use is I use a 7DW. All right. Like Box 7DW, because that's what Maurice Andre played. And if I'm going to play something, um, oh, oh, you know what? I'll show you. Check this out. Um, I should have had this stuff sitting out uh, before, but I didn't. Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. Here it is. Um, so check this out. I use a, um, see this mouthpiece right here for Piccolo? Yes. This is a, a copy of a 70W that I've been using since I was a little kid. And the guy that did it was Patrick, Steve Patrick. Yes. You know, Steve Patrick, yes. Patrick yes. mouthpieces. Yes. And he did it with a coronet shank for me. And, uh, and so I, and with a screw rim, right? And he copied it. And it's really, really good. And I, I got this adapter for the cornet shank right here. Yes. And it's That's a, awesome. Just, yeah, and what it does is it makes the horn play, uh, play better, play better in tune. So it's a 7DW copy. Then he did the same thing, and he made me a 7EW copy. A 7E right. copy, right? So it's a little shallower. And it's a cornet shank, OK? And then this I got from, um, let me put my glasses on so I can read it. <laughs> so was that expensive to, to make that copies with Patrick or not? Uh, it wasn't, it was, it was expensive, but what's expensive, you know? Well, exactly. Expensive, when I say is too much or not. Expensive. Right. Uh, roll I think it's about uh, pr probably around, you know, two or $300 to make a copy of a mouthpiece. That's, good. That's not bad. That's good. No. And okay, have you ever heard of R. Adachi? No. Adachi mouthpieces. He's a. I think he passed away, and he used to make Maurice Andre's mouthpiece. All right, I didn't know. And there, here it is. I got it from him. This oh, is Maurice wow. Andre's, and uh, it says it says right on here. Can you see that? Yes. M. A. P. Right. You are lucky. Right, Maurice okay. Andre Piccolo, and what um, it is, it's like it's like a lead mouthpiece. It's real shallow and real comfortable. That's good. And, uh, I use this for like the Brandenburg or uh, something like that. Yes. yes, you know, for for extreme high trumpet piccolo trumpet playing. Now, if I'm going to play a, like a, a you know a big band gig where I'm going to play lead, I got this mouthpiece right here that you would uh, see. Uh, So I change mouthpieces a lot, as you can. No, see. but that but that's good. That's good to know because each player is a player, and and right. like you, we can understand. You gotta that have right here. It is. Here it is. I use these. Here's our. Here are my lead playing mouthpieces. I have a a Bobby Shoe lead. Right. right here. Bobby Shoe. It's pretty shallow. You yes. Know? I have this. Uh, Walter White gave this one to me. See this? It's made of Delrin. All right. Yeah, it's not it's a, yeah, it's it's made of like it's like a really hard plastic. You can like right. beat it up yes. if you want. It doesn't it doesn't do anything to it. You can drop That's it good. on the ground, you know. That's good. And, and, and it's uh and, and you know it's got a it's made by Joe Shepley. All right. Uh, but but Joe Shepley's deceased now. Miss him a lot. And it's uh it's Delrin. I also have a metal one like this too. But Walter gave them to me, and it's just, uh, it's great for playing in the Broadway pit or anything, because you can still, you know, really get some high notes going if you need to. Yes. It's, uh, got a, it's got a, can you see the, the cup? It's pretty. Yes, I can. Yeah, it's v. pretty. Uh, it's like a V cup. Yep, yes. it is. And it's got like a double cup in there almost. And a, yes. and a small throat, so you can open your teeth, and, uh, and yes. you can really, you know, fire it up. 
So that's what I use. And what I like to do is I like to do a long tone routine that Walter taught yes. me. Walter is a, uh, he's, if you go to his website at walterwhitemusic.com, I think. Yes. You can see that uh, he sells long tone CDs, right? That he made and, he, and, they're, and they're 20 minute segments is what they are. And yes. uh, you can, uh, uh, you build endurance like that. You know, you play in the low, you do, do 20 minutes and you're, when you're eight measures on, two measures off at quarter, yes. quarter, quarter note equals 60, which is one second, you know, yes. on metronome. And then you take it off and then breathe and then do it another eight bars. And that's difficult to do, you know. It is. And then, it is. Right. And then you take a break for a while, take a 20 minute break, and then you move up in the register, get into the, into, you know, like a G in the staff or a, a yeah. two D or something like that. And you do that. And the higher you go, the less, the less you play. So when you're up to a high C, you might play four bars and rest for six. Yes. Right? Well, it also right. teach you, teaches you how to practice properly, isn't it? That's right. And then you can because... focus on sound. Yes. You can focus exactly. on, uh, and you're know, playing soft and yes. focus on control. And you can do Clark studies or you can do tonguing or, or whatever. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But build endurance and build breath control. Yes, I, I think I'm going to invite uh, Walter to be here on interview as well soon. Oh, yeah. And we can, I will. I will. Yeah. Uh, I will speak him with him. I'll tell yes. him that you're going to invite All him. All right. Okay. Ken, and we can talk a bit more about the Robinson Remedies. Ken, um, now, last question. Where can people, of course, here in England, but where, where can people everywhere in the world find the Robinson Remedies? How to get it? And what is your message to the young generation of players? Well, listen, it's, a, it's all about enjoyment. You got to, uh, you know, the trumpet is my favorite toy. Okay. That's why I say to young people, just to, if you don't like it, don't do it. Right. You got to like what you're doing, but you got to put the work in. There are no shortcuts. Um, Robinson's Remedies is, is not going to help you if you don't practice. Oh, exactly. You know, you still have to practice. But Robinson's Remedies, it's like, it's like when you see commercials on TV for uh, like people that have high cholesterol, they said, along with diet and exercise, exactly. this will help you, right? Well, guess what? Robinson's Remedy will help you along with diet and exercise. That's what I like to say. Remember, it's an athletic event. What you put into it, you will get out of it. But that, if you want to get really out of it, remedies, I'm saying if you get cold sores, give it a try. It's not going to hurt you. Exactly. exactly. Okay? Uh, if, if you want to try Robinson's Remedies, um, <clears throat> I think we, um, you can get samples from you. Yes. You can get samples from us. Um, come to a conference if you're in the United States. Yes. We go to a brass conference. Look at our website. Go to robinsonsremedies.com and check out our website. Send me a message. I yes. Be, you know, it, I'm telling you, everybody that has a, a, any chop issues or any chop questions or anything or any cold sore issues, um, just, just send me a message. You can send me a message through the website. It might take me a few days to get back to you, but I promise I will try. I, I will get back to you eventually. That's true. You, you always know? do. And you have a great team, Richard and, and Walter. Richard is always there too. I know. To Richard is the man. Richard yeah. is, uh, he's the brains behind it. You know? He's a great he's guy. The, great uh, guy. You know, without him, I don't know what I would do. Because I'm not, I'm not a person that knows anything about marketing. I'm just a trumpet player that invented something. Yes. Uh, but it did market itself, actually, because yes. it really does work. It does. It's, it does. it's just it it's does. simple science and physiology. Yes. That's what and it please, is. please, talk with me if you are here in Europe and you need any help. I can uh, help you where to buy it here from Phil Parker. Or That's I can right. buy it and send it to you cheaper because of the coming from United States, for example, to Portugal directly is a big trouble because of the port. So from England is easier. Anyway, anyway, 
just speak with me. Uh, Ken, really quick, just to finish, because I forgot. What is your new product for, for Reeds? Uh, oh. This is a trumpet. Uh, this is a trumpet channel, but maybe it's important to know because it's new. Right. Well, uh, uh, see, a lot of reed players, um, uh, you know, it, it's even some oboe players use lip renew because yes, it's, yes. they they get tired. You know, their muscles get tired. And I've noticed some woodwind players that use lip renew. But I'm thinking, what is the main thing about reed players that they complain about the most? natural cane reeds the cost of them right yes. because it costs so much to buy you buy a box for like a saxophone player or a clarinet player or something they'll buy a box of 10 reeds and they might spend this one good <laughs> uh, you know fifty dollars you know fifty dollars us usd which yes. is not cheap that's five dollars a read and they might get two or three good ones out of the whole exactly. out of the box right and then oval players they make their own reeds all the time You know, a, a lot of double reeds make their own reeds. So we invented an oil. Um, uh, I've been more, I've been, it was just a hobby before. Um, but it, a, a lot of reed players, uh, a scientist had told me that um, he had a lot of reed playing friends. And this formulation that I used to mix for my lip repair, um, so if I used a basic formulation of something else, it would keep the vitamin A and, And, and it would keep the, reed, the, the reeds flat. So what it does oh, is it, preserve, it, it preserves the reed. You just take this, we, we perfected the formula, and we just take this little nail polish bottle. Yes. And we just paint it on after you're done playing, and you'll, it'll extend the life and playability of your natural cane reeds. And people are just like going, oh, my God, this stuff works great. And I said, yeah, it yes. works better than any humidor for your reeds, right. you know? And, and it actually makes some of the bad reeds actually play great. What is what? this, uh, what's this comment right here? I don't know, how about mouthpiece? What, what's Mouth. that? Mouthpiece, mouthpiece. Oh, mouthpiece. Uh, oh, yeah, mouthpiece. Probably, is what, <laughs> probably is what he wanted to say. Well, you talked, you talked about them already if you want to say anything about it again or not uh, yeah uh classical i use a bach one and a quarter c and a three c most of the time for classical for piccolo yes. 70w bach. bach and uh right and uh for lead playing i use that uh use shallow stuff shallow stuff yep. all right yep. and bobby yep. shoe you use one bobby, bobby shoe, shoe that you have yep. bobby shoe uh, shallow all right ken man uh Unbelievable. Thank you so much. Guys, oh. for you who don't think this is just marketing, look at me. Look at me. Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere with me. I can't. I have it in my room, in my toilet, everywhere I have a little bottle. Um, it really helps. If you want to try to speak with me or with Ken, text Ken if you have any ambushed problems or cold source. Thank you send so much. Email, they, they go to the website, send us a message. I'll try to answer it the best. I will share the, your, all your details with the interview on YouTube and Facebook so they can contact you, okay? Can, awesome. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, Luis. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, okay. brother. You too. Bye. Ciao. Ciao.